It's been many months now since the major patch of Smash Ultimate. Back in January, Byleth dropped alongside patch 7.0, which has brought a few notable balance changes as well. Characters such as Samus and Cloud received buffs that gave them more threatening KO options, while top tiers like Palutena and Joker received slight yet very impactful nerfs. Palutena's down throw was changed such that she can no longer true combo into back air at kill percent if the opponent DIs. And her near knockback was also nerfed making it much easier to survive at high percents. In Joker's case, the amount of R send time he loses when he is hit was increased, and the horizontal range of his downward guns was also decreased. These changes, along with many we've seen in previous patches, sorry Pichu, show that the balance team is clearly paying attention to major tournaments and considering competitive play in their balance decisions. As has been tradition, the balance changes are not exclusively geared towards the competitive side of Smash, but also features many changes appealing to the casual community, such as nerfs to lower tier characters like Cave Rule. This always results in a mixed bag of changes that tends to leave competitive players a little bit antsy as to what we can see and expect. That being said, Smash Ultimate remains one of the most balanced games in the series, so we can at least be hopeful. Nintendo has announced that the next DLC fighter will be a character from ARMS, and that this character will be dropping in June, almost definitely accompanied by a new patch. In this video, we'll be running down the changes we'd like to see the most, and some may surprise you. But first, our question of the day. What changes would you like to see in the next balance patch? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below and stay tuned to see if the great minds think alike. If you didn't know, Pro Guys has a ton of useful resources to help you guys get better at your favorite competitive games from comfort of your own house. On our website, ProGuys.com, you can access courses to teach you guys some fundamentals of the game, with many taught by pro players such as MKLeo. We also offer instant access to coaches via our Play With Pros platform, so you can get personalized tips from the pros. Pro Guys now features a jam-packed live stream schedule on both our website and right here on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube streams go live on weekdays at 12 p.m. PST, so make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss them. So for patch 8.0, there are a lot of potential changes that can improve the game. Most obviously, we'll start with character buffs and nerfs, but changes to the game modes and mechanics are very interesting as well, and we'll get to those too. In the current metagame, there isn't any one character that dominates on or offline. Joker does have the most tournament wins, but this is largely credited to MKLeo's skill with the character. In fact, an anonymous tier list made by PGR's players plays Palutena over Joker, and many top players consider Pikachu the best despite lacking significant results. Because of this, we think buffing lower tier characters makes more sense than nerfing top tiers, but we will continue to cover some nerfs as well. Many characters find themselves in lower tiers due to inherent shortcomings resulting from the archetypes, such as big bodies being easily to combo and edge guard, so we'll be focusing more on buffy characters with a realistic path to improvement. First up, Kirby. Although he's a top tier in Smash 64, Kirby has been a low mid tier character for every other Smash game, finding himself in the bottom of tier in Ultimate. It really goes to show how humble Sakurai is as Kirby is his own creation. Kirby has a lot of weaknesses including the lack of range, lightweight, and a poor combo game. But one simple change could really improve everything. Buff Kirby's air speed. Besides Jigglypuff, it seems like they don't really give fast air speeds to characters who have multiple double jumps, but Kirby could use just a little bit more. This will improve his neutral by giving him a much more reliable aerial approach, improving his combos by letting him chase opponents down, and improving his recovery by giving him more mix-ups and making him less reliant on his upbeat. Mewtwo is a very relevant character in Smash 4, but finds himself in low or mid-tier in Ultimate. He wasn't really changed too much, but the mechanics of Ultimate make it much harder to be in a disadvantage as a floaty character with a large hitbox without being able to rely on multiple air dodges. For one thing, Mewtwo is still too light, even after his weight was buffed coming from Smash 4. Smash characters are typically very accurate to their source games, yet for some reason Mewtwo is extremely light in Smash despite being a very heavy Pokemon. Shrinking his hurtbox any further wouldn't really match his character's model, so a weight buff is one way to help him survive longer. Additionally, Mewtwo has inexplicably lost his ability to constantly edge cancel his teleport, while Palutino still thrives with this technique. Restoring this ability will give Mewtwo much more needed mix-up and disadvantage, and also make him much more fun to watch and play. Pit and Dark Pit have been long known for some of the most boring characters with nothing special in terms of strengths or weaknesses. They aren't exactly bad, but even many worse characters offer more interesting or exciting traits that can lead many players to neglect the pits. Some simple buffs could go a very long way though. A slight increase in hit stun or decrease in base knockback can make pits flash your low percent combos more optimal and consistent. Pit can also struggle to KO. So an increase in knockback on fair and up air would be nice, as well as an adjustment to make the back air sweet spot a little bit easier to connect. 
Speaking of sweet spots, Mark is a character who relies on them probably more than any other character. Despite this, the strangely precise spacing needed for consistent tippers makes Mark unreliable even when piloted by the world's best. Not to mention Lucina packs all of his basic strengths into a much more consistent package. Tippers don't exactly need to be extremely strong, they just need to be easier to land. So, a slight increase of the tipper hitbox could even be worth a nerf to the strength. On the other hand, Sheik is a character who could really use a buff to her strength. This is one way to fix Sheik's issue along with KOing, and moves like her backer and forward smash could definitely stand to be a little bit stronger, but damage and combo buffs would help as well. Making Sheik's combo a little bit more consistent would let her fit better into her archetype. This could be achieved by a few hit stun buffs or changes to base knockback and knockback growth. Alternatively, slightly increasing Sheik's damage output would make her existing combos much more worthwhile. Sheik gets the short end of the stick when put through ultimate singles damage multiplier as her puny numbers barely increase at all. Now let's go ahead and talk about some nerfs we'd like to see. Mario may not be the very first character you think of when discussing broken top tiers, but he's actually one of the few characters who has multiple ways to true combo you to death from a simple punish around 30%. Mario doesn't really rely on these kill combos to be a great character either. The damage that he racks up in basic exchanges is more than enough when coupled with his relatively safe KO options. A simple nerf to the knockback growth or angle on his up B will make it much harder for him to roof opponents with good DI, and the 50 to 70% damage that he gets from his ladder combo should be more than enough reward. Fair confirms are more situational, but a decrease in knockback to the fair spike might not be a bad idea either. Palutena is an indisputed top tier in Smash Ultimate, and while many players argue that her nair combos and invincible back air and dash attacks are overpowered, higher players often agree that Palutena is very healthy for the metagame and a rewarding character to play as and against. With this in mind, there's only one thing about Palutena that seems a little bit unnecessary for her to remain in the spot in the meta, and we're actually talking about her grab range. Palutena has one of the largest non-tethered grab ranges in the game, allowing her to shield grab many well-spaced moves. Her grab frame data is tied for the second fastest, and her nimble movement makes it easy enough to find a grab anyway, so she really doesn't need so much range. Nerfing this won't change Palutena's place on the tier list, but that's the point. If she doesn't need something to be as good as she is, I think it's fair to nerf it a little bit. Now, let's talk about modes and mechanics. Especially during the remainder of the pandemic, we would all love if a patch would come and fix Ultimate Online. Realistically, that's not something that's going to happen though. Sakurai has already addressed that their main priority right now is developing DLC characters, and business-wise, Nintendo has no reason to pour more money into an online service that 99% of its critics already subscribe to. A recent patch added a classic home run contest minigame, but we love to see the return of Break the Targets. In Smash 64 and Melee, Break the Targets offered a unique stage for every character with specialized ways to challenge each character's moveset. Adding over 70 different target stages might be a little bit much, but perhaps we could see a few universal stages like in Brawl. Finally, game mechanics. The overall gameplay mechanics are usually left untouched, but Smash 4's Universal Shield Sun increase patch reminds us that anything is possible. Speaking of which, many moves are already safe on Shield in Ultimate, but increasing Shield Sun might still be a good change if the reward for parrying is also increased. This would encourage aggression a little bit more in a game where many top players feel defensive play is rewarded too much. Do you remember when Ultimate was only playable at event demos and the number one critique everyone had was that the game felt too clunky? Well, as much as we've all gotten used to this, that clunky feel is still there and it's largely due to the traction in Ultimate. Most characters have very stiff traction, meaning that they won't carry much momentum when stopping their movement on the ground compared to many previous titles. A slight yet universal traction decrease might improve the feel of Ultimate. Smash Ultimate implemented many changes to make their gameplay faster and more exciting than Smash 4, but also removed a lot of techniques that allowed for creativity and depth. Without going too far into any of these individually, we'd love to see the return of perfect pivoting, shield dropping, melee wave dashing, and melee dash dancing. Some of these would be extremely significant and are pretty unlikely, but any of these will add a creative depth to the game. Last but certainly not least, the buffering system in Smash Ultimate continues to be ridiculed by competitive players. A toggle in the control settings to adjust buffering could easily remedy these issues, especially if the toggle allows the automatic short hop aerials input to be disabled. Although casual players may enjoy the ease of short hopping without precision, this causes all kinds of missed inputs for competitive players with no benefits, even completely removing the option of buffering a full hop aerial. A simple toggle option will allow casual players and attack counselors to continue playing as they do while giving full control back to the rest of us. Make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and turn on the notifications to keep up with our live streams and be the first to see our impressions of the ARMS character later this month. With that all being said, I hope you guys stay healthy, stay safe, and have a wonderful day. Peace.